five science-backed sales techniques. If you want to improve your sales revenue, there are only five things that you have to absolutely pay attention to. And the third one is really simple, yet it's one of those things that nobody really talks about. So I wanna go over these one by one and tell you exactly what they are. The first way to increase sales revenue is by working backwards. Let me explain what I mean by that. Sales always starts with having some sort of an offer where the value that your offer provides is significantly more than the price people actually pay for it. And the psychology here is pretty simple. The psychology is that people are willing to pay whatever price there is, even for a premium pricing sort of an offer, as long as they understand very easily and very quickly that the price they're paying is way less than the value they're getting. Now, this is a little bit obviously harder said than done, but I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. One of them is, for example, let's say you're a pizza store and you say, get your pizza in five minutes or it's free. This is really easy to understand. It's incredible value. And you know, in the case of a pizza store, you could actually deliver this. You probably don't even need a sales team or a sales process because it's a low tier item value and people are, don't really need to talk to anyone. Now, what about something that's a little bit higher priced? Again, if for a higher priced item, the goal should be having an offer that is very easily understood and the value is much higher than the price being paid. Here's an example for a higher priced item to uh, organize your offer in a way that people can understand where the value is much higher than the price. Here's an example. Let's say you're a law firm and you say, we will win the case for you or it's free. Simple, easy, understood. And you know what? The price tag could be $200,000. It could be $300,000. Depending on the uh, complexity of the legal battle, it could be a million dollars, right? First of all, it's easily understood. Two, the value to most people is also easily understood. If you're being sued and you are hiring a defense lawyer that says that to you and somebody's suing you for $50 million, you know, two, three, hundred thousand dollars for guaranteed results or you don't pay it's a no-brainer on the other hand if you're suing somebody for 50 million again guaranteed results or it's free it's a no-brainer again you got to play with your offer to make sure it's it's easily understood the second way to increase sales is by measuring and monitoring three critical numbers that result in revenue in any company on the planet average order value call volume conversion rate of calls that's all you need to pay attention to. And I've seen some entrepreneurs, including myself back in the day, get confused with a lot of different numbers, but there's only three things that result in revenue. There is nothing else behind it. It's pure math. And the best way to take advantage of this is to, again, work backwards. Meaning the first thing you want to do is increase the average order value, increase prices. It's the simplest thing to do, easiest way to achieve an increased revenue. Two is increasing sales conversion rates, which usually happens with having a better, much easier offer to explain. And the third way is by increasing the call volume or let's say traffic to your landing pages, which is mostly going to be the object of your marketing team. Now, the third way to increase revenue in sales is by measuring and monitoring the quality of prospects that are filling your call intake form. This is one of the easiest way to increase sales revenue and yet most people don't do this. Once you analyze your data, it becomes very clear that a certain specific combination of answers in your sales calendar intake form results in the highest average order value, highest conversion rates, and essentially finding the best sort of prospects that convert really easily and pay the most price. Then once you find that, you go and get your top 20% salespeople and give them only these calls. The beauty is these calls are normally only 20% of your overall calls. Again, no matter what type of a company you are, top 20% of the calls, 80-20 losses, are the most quality calls are only 20% of your overall calls. Of all of your sales team, only 20% of them are bringing 80% of the results. So mix these two, 20 and 20% and give your best calls to your top 20 salespeople. 
This immediately increases your revenue. It's always the best thing to do. That's always the first thing I always do in my companies because it's the easiest. You don't have to change your offer. You don't have to do anything fancy. You don't need to change your marketing, nothing. So that's the easiest one. Now, the fourth psychology hack you can use to increase your sales volume and sales revenue is by having a three-tiered pricing system and always introducing the highest tier pricing first to your prospects whether it's on the phone or on, on your website or a landing page always anchor them the highest price pricing this is one of the most and all this psychological experiments that's been done over and over in different industries. And when people see a highest priced item first and they're anchored to that, even when they can't afford it, the minute they're presented with the second best option, that's lower tier, they're more likely to find the pricing, even if it's a premium pricing item, they'll find the pricing a lot more manageable and are more likely to spend the money and actually buy that product. Now, the trick about a tier pricing is to price each item such that each tier includes almost a two to three fold increase in price. This is where most people get this wrong. This thing doesn't have any value, the tiered pricing, if you know you're just 10, 15% higher for each of them. You have to make your offer such that you're able to charge at least two to three, three X is better from one tier to the next. So the first tier, let's say silver is $1, gold is $3, platinum is $9. Present platinum first, then try to sell gold. Avoid talking about silver unless they actually ask for it that they want to actually buy it. This is a simple psychological hacks and it works as long as you do it ethically. It's actually best for the customers as well. Now the fifth psychology hack to increase your sales revenue is to focus on conversations during the actual calls not sales tactics. I know you've heard a lot of people talk about, you know, sales tactics uh, on social media, and some of these gurus always talk about their tactics. But having done over 55,000 sales calls and analyzed somewhere around there and counting, I can tell you the best, absolutely best psychological hack you could use during a sales call to increase sales conversion rate is to make friend with that individual on the other side of the phone. How do you do that? There's two ways you could do that. One, they gotta like you. How will they like you? One of the easiest way to get somebody to like you is to be genuine and actually listen to them. The second way is to find a common ground. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you're in a sales call and you say, oh, okay, so where are you guys located by the way? The person says, oh, we're located in Miami. And then you say, oh, cool, really? I actually did a four-year college degree. I did my bachelor's in a University of Miami. It was some of the best years of my life. This is so cool, blah, 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 blah. Now you got a common ground right there and then. And again, you can only do this if you're literally listening to the person talking. I've noticed, I've worked with a lot of sales team members. I've trained a lot of sales individuals. The individuals who are always in their own head and trying to play tactics never get this right because they're not really listening. The first rule was to listen. And in order for you to be able to listen, you have to listen to everything they say and actually pay attention so that you're not always running lines. You're literally having a conversation. The second way to get people to like you is to tell them to ask a lot of good questions uh, and analyze their situation and tell them first and foremost, what products is not for them? Because this is something most people don't do. But the minute you tell somebody, oh, no, no, don't buy that. That doesn't make sense for you. Buy this other thing. They know that, okay, you're not just trying to sell them whatever you can. So that's a very important thing. Secondly, asking good questions allows you to figure out the objections. The objections normally in, again, any company on the planet is always 80% of them is the following. Cost, for whatever reason that is, they're not the decision maker or they need to think about it. If it's cost, there's multiple different tactics. You got to, first of all, make sure you've explained the return on investment. And if that's already explained, you could always obviously offer installment plans. You could play with, you know, different payment terms, etc., and usually resolves the problem if everything else has been taken care of. If they're not a decision maker, you say, okay, can I talk to the decision maker right now? Once you figure out who it is, well, why don't we just get them on the phone? I'm here, you're here, let's talk to them. If they like it, if they're not around, you could actually have another tactic. If the decision maker is not around for you to talk to them right away, you say, okay, you know what? How about this? Why don't you sign up right now? Then if they say your decision maker, whoever that is, your parent, your colleague, your boss, your spouse says they don't like it, you let me know. I'll issue a full refund. Fair enough. But if you sign up right now, I give you 10% off. So that's another way. Usually resolves a problem. And the third issue is usually, hey, I need to think about it, is you got to usually ask, what is it that you really need to think about? 
Because sometimes they tell you, then it's usually again cost or decision maker. It's usually one of those things and then it could resolve. Now, so these questions, I'm going to give you some uh, examples of really good questions to ask during a sales call. One of it is, can you tell me about your main challenge and how you would like us to help you? Why is this a good question? A, it will tell you exactly why they're there. And then you could orchestrate the strategy for the rest of the call, how your product and service is going to solve that. Two, it puts them into the right mind frame that, hey, you are here in my home now. You're calling me, okay? This is uh, assuming that this is inbound calls. You're calling me. Obviously, you need my help. How would you like me to help you? So there is no question that they're here to get your help. Second good question I can give you as an example during a sales call is, what would happen if you can solve this problem or you cannot solve it quickly? Why is this a good question? Because again, it tells you a little bit more about why this person is trying to solve the problem, what's their main challenges, and make sure that you navigate your, the conversation of how your product and service is gonna help that specific need so that you don't run a generic line. Again, remember, this was all about conversations. That's what I talked about. The, and I'll give you another uh, one last question that's very good during a sales call is, once you've explained how you're gonna uh, essentially solve the problem and let's say you have the tier tiered pricing you say hey which one of the tiers would you like which one of the silver gold or platinum would you like to sign up for today that again assumes that they're going to sign up and this question is a beautiful question because if there is no objections sales done like right people don't know how to sign up you gotta let them know if there is an objection, it will come out right there and then. You don't have to ask any sort of weird questions to get to the objections. You address them and then again, done. Now, so to recap, to increase sales calls, unlike what most gurus tell you, you don't need a lot of sales tactics. Here's what you need. Always start with an offer that's easy to understand and has at least 10 times the value than its price. Second, measure the most important three critical things in any sales process and revenue generating process. Volume of calls, average order value, and the conversion rate of each calls. Thirdly, give your top 20% salespeople the top 20% quality calls. And the fourth thing I gotta tell you is always create a three-tiered pricing and anchor the prospects to the most expensive first, then introduce the second most expensive item. Always ignore the least expensive item unless they ask for it. And lastly, during a sales call, focus on having a good conversation. A good conversation means you don't go in with canned lines and canned script, none of that. Rather, you go in with first asking the right question, saying, hey, tell me a little bit about yourself, your challenges, and why you want me to help you. How would you like me to help you? This also allows you to focus on asking questions and listening in, because when you're listening in, another important factor is instead of running tactics, when you listen to somebody, you're more likely to make friends with them by finding a common ground. Hey, where do you live? I live here. Oh, cool. That's where I went to college. Oh, you made a common ground. Now the person likes you, more likely they trust you and they're going to buy from you. Simple as that. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this. Share it with a friend and I hope to talk to you soon.